We've all had bad roommates before, right? Well, Nancy Fister had the worst roommates ever. These roommates ended Nancy's life and showed little remorse for their actions. I'm Louie and this is Killer Bites. Let's take a trip to Colorado to discuss the worst roommates ever. Colorado is one of the best skiing and snowboarding destinations in the world for sure. And there's a popular resort near Aspen to host the X Games, as well as the story I'm gonna tell you tonight. Maybe you're there on vacation as we speak. So in the late 1950s, Art Fister was a Colorado cattle rancher, but he won't be for much longer. He lived on a picturesque mountainside with his wife, Betty, and their three daughters, Suzanne, Christina, and two-year-old Nancy. Colorado had already become their own personal Shangri-La, but by 1958, Art Fister had realized just how valuable Shangri-La could be. That winter, he redeveloped his cattle ranch into the Buttermilk Ski Resort. So this ski resort helped make the sleepy little town in the middle of the Rockies turn into the premier winter and vacation destination. His resort turned into his family's fortune. And as she grew up, little Nancy Fister would meet many of Buttermilk's glamorous and famous guests, such as Jack Nicholson, Cher, JFK, and Michael Douglas, who Nancy was actually briefly engaged to. Nancy attended the Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, and when she came back home, she became involved with the family business that she grew up in, and she had her first daughter when she was 29. She had a son almost 10 years later, but never married. She raised both of her kids as a single mother in a log home that her father built for her on the mountain. She lived in that cabin for the next 20 years, and eventually found herself with an empty nest. And like many people with extra space, she decided to rent it out to some tenants to help her pay some bills. So in 2013, Nancy put an ad in the Aspen Times looking for someone to rent her home in Colorado, while Nancy herself took a trip to Australia for a few months. She was renting out her home at the price of 4,000 a month. Nancy was excited to find ideal applicants who were older than she was, a retired doctor from Kansas named Trey Styler and his wife, also named Nancy, who wanted to pursue their dreams of permanently moving to Colorado and opening up a spa near Aspen. Trey Styler was a Denver physician who met his wife when she was a nurse. By September 24th of 2014, the happy couple had arrived in their luxury Jaguar. Fister had thought she'd found the perfect way to help cover her mortgage payments and that they were the perfect couple to rent the home. Fister even agreed to helping introduce the couple to the right people in town to get their spa up and running. While the couple was moving in, Fister was still living at the house and was preparing for her travels abroad to Australia. So they were all living there for a little while together and things were going smoothly. Eventually, Fister took off on her travels to Australia and a few months later returned home to Colorado. Fister kept the rent that she received from the Stylers in a safety deposit box at the same bank that her friend Kathy worked at. And like BFFs do, they kept in touch with each other frequently. But as Kathy was getting off work from her shift as a teller on February 26th of that year, she realized that Fister had never returned her call after it went to voicemail almost two days earlier. After finding out that Fister hadn't been at work as a buttermilk tour guide in two days either, she knew that something was wrong. Kathy drove up to Fister's secluded cabin at the top of the mountain. And when she checked the house, nobody was there either. But when she looked in the master bedroom, she noticed that the bed sheets were strewn about in an unusual mess. And upon closer inspection, she spotted a small red stain splattered across the bed frame. And Kathy immediately started peeling over the rest of the room, only to find no sign of her friend or the fate that she met. With her heart beating hard in her chest, she dialed 911 as she tried to open the closet door, but she realized that it was locked. Desperate, she remembered that there was a skeleton key that Nancy had given her in case of an emergency. And before the police could arrive, she used it. Inside the closet, she found Nancy Fister's lifeless body shoved inside, and she knew that it was already too late. Fister's family and children were devastated when investigators immediately ruled the death a murder. 
Her autopsy detailed that she'd succumbed to blunt force trauma to the head, possibly with a hammer and an ax wound to her side. Her memorial service was held at her favorite place, the Hotel Jerome in Aspen, attended by hundreds of the people she touched throughout her community as a dedicated mother, a fun-loving lifelong presence at the Buttermilk Ski Resort, and a committed member of the local PTA. Nobody could believe that anyone would ever want to do something like this to her or her family. The news shocked the whole town. Police, on the other hand, were immediately suspicious of a certain couple after learning that Fister had returned early from vacation a week before her murder. She'd returned because her elderly, retired roommates didn't end up as sweet as most of grandparents their age. As it turns out, the Stylers had been withholding their rent from Nancy due to some minor repairs being unfulfilled. The situation had deteriorated to the point that Trey and Nancy were staying at a motel in nearby Basalt, Colorado after being evicted for their missing payments. And before Fister had returned home from Colorado, she was sharing this info with the world. She had been posting about the tenants on Facebook. Fister had complained on Facebook that her tenants were not paying the rent and owed her around $14,000. This wasn't the first time that the Stylers were in financial trouble. In fact, Trey hadn't retired from medicine, but rather had to resign due to ill health. Around this time, the Stylers were likewise investigated for arson and insurance fraud by Kansas authorities after their matching Harley Davidsons had gone up in flames after suspicious circumstances. That investigation was dropped due to lack of evidence, but if they were emboldened by their previous behavior, it didn't last long. The Aspen police were hot on their trail when investigators deduced that Nancy had likely been attacked by two people who both carried her body into that bedroom closet. But the Stylers weren't the only suspects on the police's radar. Kathy Carpenter was also implicated when investigators realized she'd included vital evidence in her report that only one of the perpetrators would know. Kathy, however, would never go to trial. It would be a basalt Colorado city worker picking through a public trash can who would make the biggest break on the case when he discovered a bloody hammer, pill bottles with Nancy's name on them, and a vehicle registration for Trey and Nancy Styler's Jaguar. They definitely weren't the first people to dump evidence in a city trash can, but leaving your car registration with it? Like, really? On top of that, the hotel's owner later found a key to the closet where Fister's body was found on the ground outside of the Stylers' hotel room. When the Stylers first spoke with the police, they denied the animosity between them and Fister. But they said that after moving in, they were treated differently. Fister began to treat them almost as if they were her employees and would demand that they run errands for her. Once we gave her the money, I became kind of a slave. Get my cigarettes, get my champagne, get this, do that, rub my feet, rub my neck, Nancy Styler said. She also told the police that they had moved out of the home before she returned from Australia, and that from that point on, they didn't have access to the house, so that they couldn't have possibly been the ones to have killed Fister. In a recorded interview with Trey Styler and the police investigators, he said that he couldn't have committed the murder due to his health problems. My condition is such that I don't think I could beat up a kid. But then less than two weeks before their preliminary hearing, Trey Styler would finally confess to Nancy Fister's murder in a plea deal. A plea deal that stipulated his wife and Kathy's innocence. Trey confessed to police that he had slipped out of his hotel room one night while his wife was sleeping to confront Nancy Fister about the way that they had been treated during their tenancy in a fit of rage. But when he peeked his head into the house and called Fister's name, there was no response back. He found her sleeping in bed and watched her like a creep until the hate boiled over. He found a hammer and an ax downstairs before striking her multiple times and then driving an ax through her chest, ending her life. He stowed her in the closet himself before taking some of her clothes, medicine, and cigarettes in a vain attempt to cover his tracks and make it look like Fister had 
left on her own. Buddy, you left her in the closet. What did he think would happen? What, if investigators even made it that far, and I don't know, wanted to see if she packed any clothes out of her closet for her supposed trip? While Trey Styler's handling of the evidence implicating him might have been questionable at best, the charges against Kathy Carpenter were dropped, and the freed Nancy Styler released a book about the murder in 2015, which you might have guessed it wasn't received well in Aspen. After receiving a life sentence that was then commuted to 20 years after considering his age and medical condition, Trey Styler was found deceased in his cell after committing suicide by choking on a small piece of plastic from a broken pen in 2016. All in all, the story was pretty tragic. But Nancy Pfister's family and Kathy Carpenter herself have dedicated years to grounding Nancy's legacy in the Aspen community. In 2016, her name was added to the city's Friends of Aspen Shrine, along the likes of John Denver and famed philanthropist Molly Brown. Nancy Pfister is gone, but she will not be forgotten. And that is the case of Nancy Pfister. Ooh, what did you guys think of that case? I mean, it makes you kind of second guess your roommates now, right? Well, either way, please stay safe out there. I am Louie, and I'll catch you next time on Killer Bites.